leaves. <laughs> They are everywhere in my yard. It's because I live in an older area with a ton of them. And while gardeners love them for composting and mulches, did you know that you can actually use leaf mold as a potting soil and or soil amendment? So today's video, I'm gonna go over a very simple way to make leaf mold this year so that it is going to be ready by midsummer next year. Now, the process that you choose to do this in can vary depending on what results you wanna see. You can use this in a plastic bag, you can do it in a rubber mead, you name it. What vessel you wanna use is completely up to you. The process is the same regardless of what vessel you do it in. Before we get into how to make leaf mold, I wanna tell you what you can use leaf mold for. And that may help you determine if you even wanna go down this route. So leaf mold is different than compost and it actually is similar to peat or coconut choir. Yes, I know, sounds bizarre, but it's true. It has the same texture, water holding capacity, kind of an exchange capacity as that of a peat or coconut choir. You could use leaf mold in a potting soil setting by implementing some compost or manures into a leaf mold with perlite to make a potting soil that could be used indoors by health plants or outdoors in containers. When you make leaf mold, you're very simply just mimicking that of a peat bog, but in a plastic or some sort of water containing vessel. Now it's incredibly effective for people who live in colder climates and it works great for people who are in warmer climates as well. And the main ingredient is just leaves. That is it, that is all. You can choose to add things like lactobacillus, which I've done a video on um, how to make that before and you could add lactobacillus, but water and leaves is literally all you need. So if you're familiar with leaves, you know that there's the classic almost moist leaf that wouldn't crumple if you tried it would just go back to its original form because it's so moist all the way to those really dry crispy leaves that literally just disintegrate into powder and the question is when do you need to remove the leaves to actually make leaf mold because it it makes a big difference in how quickly your leaf mold turnaround time is. So you could choose if you wanted to, to put the whole leaves in your container and collect them as is. This means it's going to take a little bit more time for your leaf mold to turn around and turn into a usable potting soil or something you could use as a moisture holder on as a, a, a topper on top of your regular bed soil. However, the quicker way to do this is actually to make those leaves into smaller little bits and bobs. Increasing surface area is what we call this, which ultimately le leaves us with more sites for microbes to do their work and ultimately decompose. So one thing you can consider is actually choosing leaves that are already kind of brown. So letting things sit for a little while until they are crispy and dry. Obviously you're going to run the risk of potential snow or just nothing turning crispy and dry because of moisture that can happen. But if you don't have access to things like a leaf blower that chops or a weed whipper or a lawnmower, this may be the route you have to go and there's nothing wrong with that. If you do have access to a lawnmower, a weed whipper, or a leaf blower that is able to suck everything in and chop it up, then I would go that route because you can actually remove the leaves at any time then. Those leaf blowers chopping mechanisms will chop up the crispy stuff and they'll chop up the wet stuff equally as well. Now, if you have the crispy stuff, collect, collecting it then just simply means stomping on, stepping on, manipulating the bag, whatever the case is, to break down those little particles or those leaves into smaller particle sizes, which just expedites the process of decomposition. Okay, so as you can see, I have a ton of leaves everywhere and I have a small, smaller container. You can do this in a garbage bag. You can do it in a Rubbermaid. You can do it in a five gallon pail bucket. That doesn't matter too much. What I will say is you're gonna want some sort of a cover. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated cover. It can be a plastic bag. It doesn't have to be a, a top of a five gallon pail bucket. What we care about is keeping that moisture nice and high, regardless of what we're filling. For the purpose of this video, I am going to use the bucket only because I do like my leaves. I don't have, so I have a lawnmower. I could use a lawnmower. I like mine crispy. I aim for the crispy, so I actually will leave these for a little bit longer, but I wanna make this video so you guys can utilize it before time runs out type thing. Um, so I like to go crispy route with 
black or clear garbage bags and I like to crunch, just physically crunch and step on and manipulate it, uh, the garbage bag to make it into small pieces. But to show you guys just water wise and everything, what it looks like, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna just fill your bucket up and you wanna fill it nice and high. Cause remember, we're gonna crush these down and it's going to reduce the volume greatly as we increase the surface area of the leaves, things tend to fit a little bit nicer. So we, it, it compacts pretty quick. All you're gonna do is just literally crunch them up. The finer, the better. There's no wrong way to do this. You could just leave these leaves. You don't have to crush them. It just works a little bit better. So next we're just going to add our water. And during this entire process, you're just going to add water, shake it, add water, shake it. What you're aiming for is a sufficient amount of water. So it's obviously going to freeze in the zone I'm in, but this is, it's wet in the sense that I can feel a little bit of water kind of like leaking out through my fingers, but it's not dripping. And that's what we want to aim for. So from there, what you want to do is actually just go in and shake up those leaves, add water as you feel things are drying out over time. You should only have to add the water once though, Things tend to stay pretty humid so long as everything's covered appropriately. So all you're gonna do is literally, if you have a bag, give it a shake every once a month until things freeze. Uh, if it's in a bucket, give it a shake. If it's in a Rubbermaid, give it a shake. If it's in more of like a compost uh, tote type thing that's too heavy, you know, use a pitchfork to manipulate it. We just wanna make sure we're rotating it. Otherwise, what tends to happen is we end up with a lot of decomposition on the bottom, not as much decomposition on the top. And another choice you may choose to make is actually placing the container in an area that receives more sun than the rest of your yard and is out of shade. And this is contrary to maybe what normal composts are. Normal composts, we end up for, we try to aim for shadier locations, that sort of thing. But for this, we want the heat, uh, particularly so for those of us in colder climates, because we want it to continue to decompose as late into the season as possible and to start up again and thaw as quickly as possible when the spring does roll around so I would encourage you to put it in a sunnier location uh, whenever is applicable and then when things do tend to go get a little bit cooler you could choose to insulate that box or that space that you're using or making leaf mold in using snow so just literally piling all your snow up in that specific space will insulate it and help it to continue its decomposition process despite you being able to get in and manipulate it because again it's going to be a frozen block for the most part uh, the goal is just to get it to thaw it as soon as it can in the spring now what I will say is tree leaves are best for this you want to avoid using plant debris it just doesn't work as well particularly stems uh, tend to ruin a leaf mold or uh, anything that's just not leaf like <laughs> so if, if it's too stringy if it's like a root if it's literally a stem like off of a tomato or a pepper those things t tend to inhibit do use leaves whenever possible the type of leaves don't matter too too much i know there's a lot of confusion on leaves and the potential lethopathic properties of leaves such as oaks and that sort of thing i will i could do a video specific to that let me know in the comments down below but generally speaking, I wouldn't worry about that too much. I'd ignore that uh, commentary and just go ahead and make that leaf mold out of whatever leaves you have available to you. Anyways, I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button, share this video because it helps the channel a ton. Let me know in the comments down below if you've made leaf mold before, if this is your first year and what kind of leaves you're making your leaf mold from. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.